his 19-year-old girlfriend, Katie. Now, these two teenagers have a special bond that is maybe one in a million. So what is it that makes them the ultimate soulmates? Well, they're both transgender. That's right, Aaron was born Emerald, and Katie was born Luke. Today, they're with us in this first exclusive daytime interview. This couple is here to share their love story, their struggles, and an important message about acceptance. Listen to their story. From a very young age, both Katie and Aaron realized they were different. When I was younger, as a little kid, growing up as a little girl, you know, my mom put me in dance and put me in pageants, and I did all that fun little girl stuff. But as soon as I would be done with that, I'd run home, rip it off, go play in the dirt with the guys, and I just felt like I didn't fit in. I knew at about the age of four that something was really wrong, um, you know, that I was never supposed to be a boy. I remember rushing to the bathroom, looking at my mom, which is you know, despair, and I was pulling on my penis, and I was screaming at her, you know, off, off, I don't want this on here, it's not supposed to be here. And I felt really uncomfortable in the clothes and, and my, even my own skin. Both children were bullied by their peers. I was bullied in every way imaginable. Some of the names I was called was, you know, gay, lesbian, transvestite, tranny, and I've been punched and kicked and pushed and shoved and spat on. I didn't have too many friends in, uh, after second grade. I really just stopped hanging out with a lot of people because they didn't want to hang out with me. I was the oddball. After years of emotional turmoil, as teenagers, they convinced their families to help them transition from the sex they were born as to the sex they felt they were meant to be. When I was about 15 years old, it came down to the deciding factor. Either I was going to transition and be male, or I wasn't going to be here anymore because I was so unhappy being female. When I came out to my mom, and she looked me deep in the eyes, and she said, I will do anything to make sure that you stay alive. I want you to write me a list, a list of however many things you want to get done to make you happy so I don't have to come home every day and be afraid I'm going to see you dead on the floor. Both teens took drastic steps to change their appearance. I had chest surgery to remove my breast within a year of starting testosterone. To get on hormones and to be called Katie, not Luke. She, not he. All their young lives, these teens struggled in isolation, just wanting to be understood and accepted. With their transformations nearly completed, the only thing missing was that special someone. That's when lightning struck. Miraculously, the two strangers with uniquely parallel lives met, and they've been inseparable ever since. Oh, now, we're going to talk about your transitions in just a moment, but how... How did you two meet? Let's, let's start with that. How did you meet? Well, we first met at a transgender equality group meeting for transgender youth. And I walked in and I knew who she was immediately because I've read about her a year before transitioning. And she's like a celebrity to me. And I was like, wow, she's so beautiful, mom. <laughs> you know, you got to see her. And then, you know, three weeks later, I had a bad night at prom, got dumped on prom. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I went and I saw her there, and I, my, I had to pick my jaw up up the ground and said, finally got the confidence to ask for, for her number, and we just hit it off from there. Next day, we're on a date. Wow. <laughs> so, what was that first date like? Was it like, you know, wow, you've walked in my shoes, you know how I feel? Oh, yeah, definitely. We just sat and talked about our old experiences, you know, what we liked, what we didn't like, and then... Uh, we just basically said, you know, hey, it would just be perfect if, perfect if we just switched, you know. We just switched parts and switched, you know, stories, and it, it would be a lot more comfortable and a lot easier in our lives. Let's talk about clothes. So, <laughs> why you're, you're laughing. Where do you get your clothes from, Katie? Him. <laughs> How can you uh, well, say we have the same hip size? Uh, well, you know, uh, we, I, I got rid of all my old boy clothes, you know, a long time ago. What did but, you do with them? Um, I gave them away. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, burned some, honestly, you know, because I, I didn't want anything to do with it. And uh, when we first started dating, 
uh, we had this great idea because he had all these extra girl clothes that he wasn't going to wear. And he goes, well, hey, we kind of wore the same size. How about I just give them all to you? And actually, this dress used to be his. Oh! <laughs> Never wore it. Never right? wore it. Never wore it. No. What, what, did you, what did you say when you first saw Katie in one of your old dresses? What did you say? She w looks better, better than me. Than me. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's, let's come to those transitions. Now, you had your transition first, am I right, Katie? Yes. And what, what was that like? What, was, what did they do for people who have no idea? Oh, well, um, the surgery is pretty complex. Basically, what they do is... Uh, in the simplest terms possible, they just turn it inside out. Like they, they do the miraculous thing of they cut it and they and they just flip it inside out. And it's hard to, to understand it, but yeah. you know they cut off the testicles. It's called a vaginoplasty. Yeah. Was it scary before the operation? Nope. No, not for me. As soon as I landed on the plane, I was like, roll me on a bed and cut me open right this very second. I don't care how much it hurts. I don't care, you know, how long it takes. And I, I just don't care. Get it over with. Right now, I want to be who I've always wanted to be. I have to say, I know it sounds like a, a dumb thing to say, but I'm being honest, and a lot of people who are watching would, would think the same. It is hard to believe that you were ever a boy. And it's hard to believe that you were ever a girl. It really is. Um, but let's talk, but you, you had to take, you, you both had to take hormone therapy as well. So first of all, with you, Katie, what differences did that make to you? Did it make you go all stupid like us? And... <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> well, well, stupid like us, yeah. You, you know, you yeah. know, you're kind of moody, moody, and did it have that effect well, on you? Um, estrogen doesn't really do that much you know it, it mm. to, unlike testosterone it, it doesn't really change too much of your features it doesn't change you know your muscle growth or anything I mean it makes your hair shiny makes it grow a little faster makes your skin softer but all, all in all it doesn't change your voice it, I mean it makes like hair grow on your body a little slower a little thinner but all in all it, that's that's it mm. so let's come to you Aaron now you started I'm guessing with the hormone therapy first what what did that do to you because as you said testosterone is a whole different Ball game, it's I was very say. aggressive <laughs> hormone. It did everything for me. I mean, it changed my voice within two days. I cracked my voice and changed my body structure. It placed my fat in different places instead of my butt or breast. It just yeah. started. I basically dropped fat, but I gained 30 pounds of bone and muscle, and it just wow. changes everything. Was it, was it a weird sensation in many ways, or welcome, welcome but weird, or...? It, w it wasn't weird at all because it finally felt I was hitting puberty. You know, it felt like, oh, it's about time. This is what I'm supposed to be. This is what I'm supposed to live like. So, can I ask just in general terms, I mean, you're, you're dating now, so uh, are you intimate with each other? Yeah. <laughs> Oh. dramatic effect. I mean, that's <laughs> <in> my <laughs> Um, yeah, that's pr a pretty common question, because it, it's, it's yeah, a curious are, question. Yeah, yeah. People want to know, you know, is there intimacy? Because you, you haven't had all the, op you haven't had the whole operation yourself, no. have you? And, and you, you wouldn't get it, or you, you don't want it? You or? know, if it was medically there, I would get it, but honestly, I don't want to lose sexual feeling, and that's a big chance when you get the surgery is, mm -hmm. you know, they take a skin graft off your leg and your arm, and it's very, very invasive, and there's a highly much chance you're not going to feel a thing. So you want to wait until surgery come I want it until come, it's medically come along higher. Yeah. yeah. I get that. I get that. Um, so does that leave out a love life? Can I put it that way at this moment? Is it more about... It's a little bit harder, you know, it's not, no matching gear, and so there's not, the inst intimacy isn't really a... It's uh, not there. It's yeah. not, yeah, it's not there, really. Yeah. But, but it's was, never about that. Yeah, it's not with about us. that. I mean, it's about exactly. the connection and the love that we have. That, that's that, real intimacy. Yeah, really. yeah that's real. We both have walked in the same shoes. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. We're, we're just, you know, we're so young, and we're just having a good time, having fun with each other, spending time with each other, getting to know what we still like, and, and, uh, and what we, where we are in life, you know, we're still babies, really. Heck, I haven't even started college yet, yeah, you know? yeah, I got to my high school first. And I'm in college, and I focus on my studies, and I, and I focus on, you know, my future. And uh, What do you want to do in the future? Pilot. <laughs> I want to fly pilot? planes, yeah. Yeah. And what, what do you want to do? Um, I always wanted to be a, a 
anthropologist or sociologist, but apparently everyone backstage thinks I should be a doctor or research facilities. Uh, they were they're on the on the way here. They said they said, Katie, this isn't really a nutrition show. We're yeah. actually holding an intervention for you to go to med school. They want you to go to med school. Yeah. She has a she has a mind for it. She's extremely intelligent, so I just wanted to <laughs> yeah, their full potential. The full potential. Now, we're, we're talking about the transitioning, and you actually documented your breast removal surgery. It's only mm -hmm. fairly recently, yeah. right? Uh, and you're going to share some video with us. So uh, stay with us. We'll have that when we come back. Before the break, we were talking to Aaron and Katie, the transgender teen couple who has piqued the curiosity of America. Now, as a parent, I can't help but wonder about the challenges facing the mother of a young child who wants to transition to the opposite sex. So, let's find out. So, joining us now is Aaron's mother, Denise, and Katie's mother, Jaslyn. <laughs> I'll start with uh, I'll start with you. You did you want a girl or a boy when when you were pregnant? I really really wanted a girl. You got I, your wish. Yes. And you called her Emerald. Emerald. Do you get teary when you look back at those photos? As almost yeah. I still do. It's getting better, but I still do. What 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 what's the teary bit about? Um, because I you know you lose that the the girl the mother daughter relationship. And we <laughs> heard about Emerald going into all the pageants and dancing. Yeah. She did. She did awesome. Um, she had gorgeous hair and, you know, a cute smile and pretty eyes and, you know, all the little things that you would want to mm. throw your little girl into and, um, you know, we did that. Were things sort of starting to develop at school that started making you question what was going on? She was always like the loner. She was always like the different child. You know, and that was hard to see because I was thinking yeah, at home yeah. she's such this cool kid. You know, she climbs trees and she does pageants and she does dance and she's so well-rounded. And But at school she just kind of slipped away and she was kind of, um, she didn't fall into the male group or the female group. I didn't know what was wrong. Did you see an unhappiness increase or some problems? As she hit, when she, when she hit puberty, that's when the real signs. And for you, Jaslyn, though, you thought, what did you think about Katie? How was uh, Katie's behavior different from the um, other boys? About the age of three, uh, Katie started telling me that um, he wanted his parts off. Literally pull on it and say, off, off. And then um, when he started school at the age of five, um, it was just a fight constantly because he just, couldn't understand why he couldn't wear a dress to school. And so I just kind of started telling dad, I said, you know, we're, you need to prepare yourself now um, that we're going to have a gay son. Now, meanwhile, Katie and Aaron, you're at school. You know, your moms are seeing it from the outside. What was happening to you at school? How were your peers? How were your school friends? Did they think you were a, you know, a lesbian or, 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 or did they? You know, I wore a plaid skirt because it was a private school, and I walked like a dude in it, you know. It's not, I mean, it was kind of there. Yeah. I could never walk like a girl and do what they're supposed to do. I just couldn't do it. But, you know, it was cool because the first couple days of school, the new kids would come in, and I'd have friends for a couple days before people would actually tell them not to hang out with me. And what about for you, Katie? What was happening meanwhile? What was happening for you at school? Well, I went to a public school, so I did I, I had to, more restrictions. I covered my body because I was so ashamed of myself. You know, I was ashamed of my body, and I would wear jeans in the summer and a big black coat to disguise myself. And so, you know, I tried to be incognito so no one mm. would pay attention to me. I did the exact opposite. I almost made myself want to be excluded so no one would judge me but, and hurt but, me. Did kids judge you and hurt you and bully you? Definitely. Did, I mean, what did they do? Uh, from everything from verbal exclusion and, and physical abuse, you know, I was What, punched, hit you? Hit me, pushed me, shoved me, spat on me. I ha I've had a lot of people spit how on did, me. How so. does that affect you? Because every kid wants to fit in. What, what, did you cry? Did you act out at home? Did you just go into your shell? I went into a deep, dark place. I was suicidal by the age of seven. I mean, that's really? how bad it was. Well, in Oklahoma, there's not very many people like me. I had no president to look up to whenever I was in You, high you just wanted out school. of the pain? Definitely. And did you know that? Did you know no, that, um, I mean, I, I knew that she was suffering, but I didn't know. Um, I just found out a couple years ago about the suicide attempts. Um, I mean, you have to understand, we come, we live in Oklahoma, and so um, it's, it's a big Bible belt. You know, Aaron went through the same thing. I mean, he went to a Christian school or a Catholic school. Were they accepting? No. I mean, they he asked was... me to leave because I broke the honor code. What right. was the honor code that you broke? Just 
following the Bible. Just school. their honor code. Just because code. I was different and, you know, since I was starting to be more manly, they said I broke the honor code. It was like a slap in the face. I mean, your child is like, I mean, the I tried so hard to fit in for 12 years and they said, you're not good enough for us. That and was you got the grown-ups that are shunning them, too. It's not mm -hmm. just the kids. The parents? The parents were, were more, more brutal than the children. I've even had teachers at my public teachers. school show people, you know, interviews I've done or something and let them laugh at me. They, you know, they, they, they let the kids t take out their iPhones and laugh at me. Can I ask for both of you, the mums, what the real lowest point when you thought, this isn't just my kid being excluded or acting differently or anything like that? My lowest point when Aaron's lowest point was when he was asked to leave school. Um, that night he, he finally told me I, want, I wanted to kill myself four nights ago. I actually called the suicide hotline. I was on the phone with them the entire night. I, was, I didn't sleep. And um, I said, why didn't you tell me? And he said, because, you know, this is what broke my heart too. Um, I wanted to, I said, why would you want to do that to yourself? I want you here as my child. He said, because you always told me this, your life's going to be so hard. Are you sure you want to go down this road? Are you sure? Mm. You kept telling me how hard it was going to be. He goes, well, if it's going to be so hard, why would I want to be here anymore? And, you know, as a parent, sitting there in that room with him at that moment and knowing that um, I didn't want to be any to blame for that. And I also knew how painful it must have been for him. And I looked down and the knife was still on the floor. And this was like four days before that. And I thought, I don't want to bury my child. And I think every parent needs to know they need to listen to their kid. <laughs> don't want to lose the child over there. But you felt that low. What, did you think that with you, your mum saying that, that she'd finally gotten to a place where she really, really understood how much this meant? She didn't really understand, but she came to the point where it doesn't matter if I understand or if I'm not on board with it, I need to do this for your mental yeah. happiness. Yeah. Did that help? That must have been a load off your shoulders. What do we need to do to, to sort this out? It took a while to get a load off my shoulders. Yeah. It took, you know, getting top surgery, you know, weight off my chest. Literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about for you, Jasmine? then? When, when was that moment when you thought, oh, heck? Ours was a lot more intense. I came home one day, and Katie was in her bedroom. As soon as she came home from um, school every day, she locked herself in her bedroom. We never saw her. Oh. And, um, you know, I had tried everything, and... And just something told me, you go to this door. And I went to the door and I, I begged for her to let me in. And when I got in the room, uh, Katie was in a fetal position and just wailing, because I could hear her crying. And, and the cry was just different than, mm. I mean, she cried herself to sleep every single night for eight years that I know of. And I had to go to sleep every night listening to her cry because I, I couldn't find a way to help her. And uh, the whole time I just thought, she was just trying to come up with a way to tell me she was gay. And um, I got down on the floor with her, and I just literally remember grabbing her, and I was just in a, an anger. Um, you've got to tell me. You know, what is wrong? I'm not, I can't do this no more. I'm not going to watch you die. I'm just not going to do this. And I am not leaving this room until you tell me how I can save you. I just remember, I'm like, you're, you know, just tell me. And I said, you're gay. I know it. Just yeah. tell me. And she just looked at me and with this anger, and she's like, I'm not gay. I'm transgender. And I thought, I'm, think, I, 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 I'm thinking transvestite. I thought, okay, so you want to dress up in girls' clothes. I got a whole closet in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Katie gave you a list. She... I, and I asked her, I said, you tell me what you want me to do. You make me a list, and I swear to God, if, uh, if everything in my power, if I don't care, and if it kills me, I swear to you, I will complete everything on that list. Just the keep her alive. So, Denise, coming back to you, and we were jo kind of almost joking before about the weight off your chest. <laughs> How was it for you as a mom watching you know, your daughter go through that operation and there's no turning back from that. I only had one sad moment and it was after he was wheeled away and I stood in the hallway before I went out to the waiting room with my mom and my sister was waiting for me and uh, I had a, you know, a little tiny breakdown moment like this is it, this is his final step and it was 
the final step of letting go of Emerald and letting go of that female part of him. Now, Aaron actually documented, you documented your chest surgery, and we have some exclusive footage uh, to show everyone. Let's take a look at that. From a very young age, both Katie and Aaron realized they were different. I knew at about the age of four that something was really wrong, um, you know, that I was never supposed to be a boy. When I was about 15 years old, it came down to the deciding factor. Either I was going to transition and be male, or I wasn't going to be here anymore because I was so unhappy being female. Both teens took drastic steps to change their appearance. Miraculously, the two strangers with uniquely parallel lives met, and they've been inseparable ever since. Aaron actually documented, you documented your chest surgery, and we have some exclusive footage uh, to show everyone. Let's take a look at that. The day had finally arrived. Aaron was going to take the biggest step yet towards transitioning into a man. This is tissue that gets removed from liposuction. This is tissue that is removed surgically with scalpel electrocautery. The time had come for Denise to say goodbye. Everyone was a bit nervous, but hopeful for what the future would bring. Love you. See you when you're done. Okay. <laughs> okay. Love you. Bye. Love you, baby. Love you. Uh, ready? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm ready. It's going to be awesome. The surgery to remove Aaron's breast tissue took a total of three and a half hours. After the successful operation, Denise was happy to be reunited with a groggy Aaron and to share her feelings about the outcome of the procedure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I felt really loopy. Do you? Yeah, they put some morphine in me. Okay. They said it looks really awesome. Do they? it's important for people to know we're just regular people trying to you know take back what we missed part of our childhood or whether that be our adult life Stand we are just up. trying to catch up and be happy and <laughs> Katie I know you, you you're quite a powerful speaker because I understand it was a, at one of your uh, talks that you gave mm -hmm. that someone you had a, an, an anonymous donor who paid for your college and all your your operations everything yeah is that so, right like I said there was I was the first open transgender to ever graduate or come out in Oklahoma I was the very first one I didn't have a precedent to look up to there was no one before me and I was actually at this uh, it was a it was a Jewish camp and it was a subject of judgment and when they called me up I gave my two-hour speech about my life my memoir of my life asked questions and someone in the audience you know, heard my speech, who told someone, who told someone, who told someone. And uh, a couple of months later, they call my mom on her birthday, and they, they said, we have some great news, and we have some anonymous donor who wants to pay for Katie's surgery and her college and whatever else that she needs mm -hmm. to get her through this time in her life. I had completed everything on the list. Yeah. Except number 10, which was um, Katie's reassignment surgery. Um, I don't make a whole lot of money. Mm. And um, I knew that was, that was my hardest hardship. How am I, I I'm never gonna be able to complete this number 10. I wrote the donor a big letter and I, I mean, there are no words that could ever express what this person has done for me. I had to write a uh, five-page essay of why I wanted the surgery, what, what made me, you know, feel did like I deserved it. Did it save your life? Do you think it saved your life, it, the surgery? Yes, it yeah. definitely did. It saved your life. Now, I can this, only say thank you. That's all this I can. person kept me from being a failure as a mother. I was able to complete um, my whole list. You know, I was able to keep my full promise to Katie because yeah. of this person. Help. And someone did this for me, if I ever make the money, if I ever make enough money or do something with myself, the very first, you know, amount of money that I make, it's going towards someone else's surgery. Well, can that's, I, that's can how I just say, just by being here today, just by talking so honestly about what you all have been through, you've probably done what, you know, a lot of money couldn't do. Tell a lot of young people, a lot of people out there, 
that it's you know how they're feeling there is a way forward and that there's a place for them in this world that's mm -hmm. what my biggest point of the story is, is that <laughs> it's, it's not just about that the normal my what i would tell people is that for one listen to the children yeah. now, even though you think they're young and they might be ignorant or you think that they don't know what they want you need you have to listen to them it's because it's not always a phase it's not, al it's not always it's usually not always. just for the same reason you know your boy or a girl and they know they if who i was they to are. ask you how would you know if you were a girl you just say i just knew mm -hmm. and that's how it was for us it was right. just, you just you we just, just knew. knew i want to thank you so so much for being here <laughs> We were talking to a transgender teen couple and their moms about the challenges of transitioning to another sex. But families with even younger children are coming out and taking their stories public. Joining me now is Michelle. Up until last year, she had a little boy, an 11-year-old boy named Sebastian. Well, today, Sebastian has become Hannah. Listen to her story. It was only recently that Sebastian told me he wanted to be a girl. Prior to that, growing up, he was a very much the stereotypical boy, liked video games and superheroes. Flash forward, he's 11 years old, he goes out with family and comes back and tells me he wants a sex change operation. I was absolutely floored. I didn't encourage it, I thought it might just go away, but Sebastian persisted. He was telling the kids at school that he was a girl, asking to be called female names. It became apparent that this wasn't going away. Within a few months, we transformed Sebastian into the girl he would become, and we call her Hannah. The hair, the clothes, the makeup, we started hormones. I was going to do everything I could to help her be happy and to be Hannah. The hardest part for me emotionally is having to deal with other people's judgments. My biggest fear is that she'll have difficulty having a normal life, finding someone to love her forever, integrating into society. But I'm optimistic. Hannah's just started junior high. I'm anxious. You know, kids can be mean, but I'm hoping that with all the love and support that we've given her, that she'll get through it. I want for Hannah to grow up like every other child. There's no reason she shouldn't have what all the other kids have. So, Michelle, you said judgment is the toughest part because um, we didn't talk about that with the other moms, but what kind of judgments have been made about you because of, of Hannah? Um, you know, I think the hardest judgment came unexpectedly. Um, I had a family member that we went um, to a family party and she said to me, you know, I know why Hannah or, or why Sebastian at that point wanted to be mm -hmm. Hannah. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said it was because I had given so much love and attention to my older daughter that Sebastian must want to be a girl so she could uh, get the same love and attention. And that, that really took me off guard. Now, you said it's not, it, it, you realized it wasn't a phase. So obviously, at first, you thought, what, this is just something he'll, he'll get over. Yeah, well, you know, honestly, at that point, you know, I wasn't as educated as I am now, mm -hmm. and um, people link gender identity with sexuality. And so um, yeah. I said, well, okay, so you're going to be a girl. Who do you like? Who are you going to date? Yeah. And, um, oh, boys. I said, okay, well, then you're gay. Right. And, oh, oh, absolutely not. So when did you start allowing Sebastian to even wear girls' clothes? Um, it, it took a couple of months. Um, my older daughter was very excited at the prospect of having a younger sister who she, she didn't have at that point. I have two younger sons. Um, and uh, we were going to a Pride event in Providence and I felt this was a, a perfect opportunity because um, of the community that she'd be in and she'd be accepted and wouldn't have to worry. So my older daughter did a makeover and the smile and the glow that just came from her. I, I, you know, I'd never seen anything like it. Did you feel then you were doing the right thing? Because the, the only thing is, because, um, you know, we, we've heard with the other moms, it took years and years and years of the anguish and the pain, and yet for, it, it's, it's a different story with, with Sebastian or Hannah. Mm -hmm. How long has it been from the moment 
uh, Sebastian came back and said, I want to be a girl, to now. How long ago was We're that? We're going on almost uh, two, two years, it'll be in December. Right. How are the kids with Sebastian becoming Hannah? Now, honestly, that was a huge fear of mine. Uh, Hannah um, returned to the same school, so I figured there was absolutely no way that she wasn't going to be bullied when she went back. Yeah. And um, I, I did what I could. I, I contacted my local youth pride. I had them come in and do trainings. Um, she actually went to the, the, her classroom and she stood up in front of the class with a social worker at school and explained it to them. So we did as much as we could. And I have to say, with the support of the school department and the teachers, absolutely zero bullying all of sixth wow. grade. Wow. Now, um, Hannah says, you know, as you say, she's happier than she's ever been before. And uh, she's living her life as a girl. So let's listen to this. My name is Hannah and I'm 12 years old. I was born as a boy and I have a girl's mind. Like, I identified myself as trans when I was 12 years old. I used to stick my finger down my throat because I didn't want to go to camp as Sebastian. School has been so far good because I was nervous that kids would make fun of me. I started taking the hormones three months ago and I'm really happy. The hormones are going to help me develop breasts, make my hair softer, and I'm not going to get a period. I'm happier as Hannah because this is who I'm supposed to be. Well, Hannah is only 12 years old, and we all agreed it would be better if we talked to her backstage where she feels more comfortable. So, let's go and see her. So, hi. Now, you started junior high. Uh -huh. How's that? Junior high has been good because um, I really think it's been um, so accepting of me. Now, uh, were, you, were you scared? Were you a little bit nervous about how the kids would be when you went to school? Uh, yeah, I was. Butterflies in the tummy. Yeah. So, do you know what it means to be transgender? Yes. What does it mean? Transgender is when um, you're you have a girl's brain and a boy's body, mm -hmm. and you you don't you don't approve. So, how do you feel at the moment? Do you feel like a, a boy or a girl? I feel like I'm a girl. So, what was the first time like? The first time you dressed as a girl, what did that feel like? Uh. It felt like um, like a burst of sunshine, like I was opening up my my brain and heart, like to who I am. When you first looked in the mirror, what did you think? Um, I think that I was I looked pretty. And was did, was mum happier? Do you think? Yeah, I think she got the clue somewhat. What made you tell mum? Was it? Did you think I'm old enough now to tell her? Or <laughs> no. Um, I heard on the radio that some guy had a sex operation, and I asked mom, can I have a sex operation? You're off to school. Yeah. Right, so we actually thought we would give you a little off-to-school to gift. We're going to give you a shopping trip for school. Oh, my God, yay. $500. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and with Mum's permission, maybe we could also throw in there a trip to the hairdressers. <gasps> she, she desperately wants to put highlights in her hair. And finally, would you like to meet Katie? Yes. <laughs> I love that because I can't wait to meet the couple. Have, they have, seem have so you, nice. Have you heard about Katie? Yeah, I have. So, we'll... We'll get you and Katie together to spend some time together today. Do you like that? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Is that okay, Bob? Yeah, Bill, that's fine. That's fine. I want to thank you both, all right, for being here. That's really sweet of you to come come here today, and good luck. Can I get a hug? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew at about the age of four that I was never supposed to be a boy. Either I was going to transition and be male, or I wasn't going to be here anymore because I was so unhappy. He's 11 years old and tells me he wants a sex change operation. Do you feel like a boy or a girl? I feel like I'm a girl. Would you like to meet Katie? <laughs> Nice to meet you. Right? You are very special, and you you're just unique. You you are your own person, and you belong in this world. I feel really honored to meet you too. <laughs> you you're, awesome. you're so sweet.
I'd just like to acknowledge the courage and bravery of our guests today. The world can be a really rough place, and these fine young people have taken the road less travelled in pursuit of their own true peace and happiness. I want to thank you for watching. Take care.